Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. And now after that craziness of the breaking news with Brandon Ayuk getting his deal out of the way, we're going to be talking about some more news regarding the Dallas Cowboys adding a new player to their practice squad, but ultimately to their team at the end of the day. Back on Monday, uh, veteran running back Dalvin Cook flew into Dallas to meet with the Dallas Cowboys. Obviously, he had a tryout there with them. And yesterday, it was made official that Dalvin Cook had signed with the Dallas Cowboys, but not to their official roster. He signed to their practice squad at the time being. And now, the 29-year-old former Vikings, former Jets, former Ravens running back would, would be available for the Dallas Cowboys to their main roster during their week one matchup against the Browns if he is needed. If the Cowboys decide to activate him to the main roster, he'll be available to do that. But for right now, he is uh, slated as a practice squad player for the time being. And now, my feelings around Dalvin, you know, before I really get into it and sharing it, I just giving you guys a little bit of context on Dalvin and how it's gone for him over the last few years, you know, over the last few seasons, He's, um, I think he's been removed from being considered one of the best running backs in the NFL because it hasn't been too long, but it feels like a lot longer because from 2019 to 2022, only two years ago, uh, he was named to four straight Pro Bowls. He tallied over 1,300 yards from scrimmage in each of those years and, again, considered one of the best running backs in the NFL during that time, but just... That was only two years ago when that you know period ended. Then uh, the Vikings move on from him. He actually had shoulder surgery, and that sort of played into their decision to move on from him. He signs with the Jets, and it really doesn't take off from there because last year when he played with the Jets, he played in 15 games for them, uh, recorded only 214 rushing yards with zero touchdowns to his name, and that wasn't enough, obviously, to keep him on the roster, so... He was cut by the New York Jets before the end of the season, and then he signed just a temporary um, deal with the Baltimore Ravens for the playoffs, but he only played against the Houston Texans in um, you know just some dead time there towards the end when the Ravens had the, the game wrapped up. So that wasn't going to be a long-term plan. Obviously, he moves on from the Ravens, and now he has been a free agent all this time. He actually had another meeting planned with the uh, Indianapolis Colts later this week or sometime right now, but um, obviously that was canceled and he signed with the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, um, the Cowboys also released Royce Freeman on Tuesday, so, you know, it kind of was a domino effect. You bring in Dalvin probably with the hope of signing him. Royce Freeman gets cut at the deadline to shave your roster down to 53 um, to the 53-man requirement, and now I presume that Dalvin Cook will ultimately step into that role vacated by Royce Freeman. I felt like the uh, the Cowboys, not only did they say they were going to have a running back by committee, but I felt like it was always going to be a three-man job, not just a running back duo of Zeke and Rico Dowdle. Um, I thought Royce Freeman was going to get involved in there at some point in the year, but now that he is gone, it feels like it should be Delvin, Zeke, and Rico Dowdle as the three main running backs for the Dallas Cowboys. And now, now how I feel about it, you know, just the simple question of why, just why for the Cowboys to sign Dalvin Cook, really, at this point, 29 years old, I didn't really see any indication that he would be able to provide any more than what Royce Freeman was going to give you, honestly. Um, Other than the fact that he is Dalvin Cook, obviously, but he hasn't played like it for the last two years. So really signing Royce, signing Dalvin, you know, it's just pretty much the same thing at this point in their careers. Um, I actually don't know how old Royce Freeman is, but I feel like the expectation with either running back was going to be the same at the end of the day. And uh, I'm just not really a big fan of adding pretty much almost a carbon copy of what you have in Zeke at this point in his career as well, 29 years old for him as well. And I say that, but I'm also a fan of 
trying to get more values into the running backs, especially those running backs that are in their late 20s, even early 30s. I feel like you can get value out of them, but just as long as, as they as they give you reason to, right, if that makes sense. Um, just don't sign them off of the fact that they're two years removed from being what they once were. If Dalvin had been playing for the Jets and he put up decent numbers, close to 1,000 yards, a couple touchdowns or anything like that, um, then, you know, signing a 29, 30-year-old running back just off of that season, I can see why you think that there is some upside there, obviously, and think why um, he can continue that on with your team. But seeing how he was just a backup last year, um, playing behind Brees Hall, getting barely 215 yards rushing to then sign him now and have pretty much the two running backs that are in the same situation just is a little bit confusing to me. It's a little bit redundant, obviously, for um, the Cowboys and what their long-term plan is with this signing because honestly, honestly, talking past this year, I wouldn't be surprised if Dalvin isn't even on the team next year or if they cut him at some point this year if they have to make some more room. That could be a real possibility. So, again, I don't really see the the benefit of si- signing Dalvin Cook right now. Um, I get again. I know it is to their practice squad, but even that, um, what was the point of taking Royce Freeman out and just bringing on Dalvin if they're going to give you pretty much the same thing? Um, also, it, it just feels like the Cowboys are always late with everything that they do. It always feels like they're one step behind just missing an opportunity or taking too long to get through. It's always a struggle. They're always dragging their feet, and that could get so frustrating. I could imagine. I'm not even a Dallas Cowboys fan, but it could just seem so frustrating when the last couple examples that we have here, you know, you look at CeeDee Lamb. He got his deal very late in this process, going back even to last year when they could have done it, and he would have been a lot cheaper. Obviously, he has the season that he goes on and has, all pro and everything like that, right? Setting a bunch of records. But even then, they seem to have a plan to want to extend Dak first. They dragged their feet on this deal, not making a move and deciding on who to sign first, still holding out hope. And then you have a just just a wave of wide receivers that get signed and it just drives up the price even more. And now you wait till the last minute and CeeDee Lamb becomes a little bit more expensive or a lot more expensive actually um, and you get that deal done, but it took a lot longer than um, I think people expected it to, obviously, because how could you not extend C.D. Lamb after the year that he had? Then uh, you look at this running back group specifically. I remember watching an interview on the, uh, the Pivot podcast where Derrick Henry was a guest on, and he talked about the idea of signing with the Dallas Cowboys and you know the opportunity of playing for them, and he said that he would be a... Uh, he would be open to the idea of going there, but, you know, an offer never came in. You know, they, you know, waited a little bit too long for the opportunity of getting a guy like Derrick Henry, and that opportunity passed them by yet again, and then they ended up settling for Zeke and bringing him in for a similar reason, a similar just confusing reason, to me at least, because Zeke, after that year with the New England Patriots, you know, he played 17 games, but he was coming off a off he was coming off of his worst year just in the NFL in in general because he played those 17 games had a career low in attempts with 184 career low in yards with 642 and a career low in touchdowns with only 5 touchdowns albeit it was with a uh worse off Patriots team but you see that kind of season and you still sign him because you sort of panic signed him just to get a running back in because you lost out on Tony Pollard is not the right way to approach these decisions and then also just thinking of other things that they took too long on this decision with Mike McCarthy we're not advocating for anybody to get fired but after you perform like you do against the Packers at home and get beat that bad the fact that they kept Mike McCarthy and they made that decision pretty quickly after that loss is just, again, it feels like they're going to be a year late on making that decision to move on from Mike McCarthy because after this year, I feel like they're going to fire him anyway. So I don't really see the point of keeping him another year if you truly don't believe and haven't done enough 
to give him the best opportunity to extend that contract, right? It just feels like a lame duck year for McCarthy. And then also, talking about Dak Prescott, they're late with this decision even more, pushing it further and further back as we go on. And the further they do that, I feel like they're not going to get an extension done during the regular season. So the fact that they're dragging their heels on this also, not to absolve Dak from maybe holding his stance on wanting a set number and maybe the Cowboys can't just can't meet it. That's fair. But uh, again, it feels like they took too long with Dak. And now you have Trevor extended. You have Tua extended. Uh, Jordan Love gets a massive contract. And then once, once the time where you could have extended Dak, you waited too long. And now it feels too late. And you could be on the verge of losing one of the best quarterbacks just from 2023. So the overarching thought about this is that the Cowboys just overestimate how much time or how many opportunities they are going to have to improve their team. And then once it all goes wrong, they just settle or panic sign somebody. And then um, I think they're left with more questions than answers after, especially this signing Dalvin Cook to a running back room that I don't think got any better. So I didn't really see the point of signing Dalvin, but you know, it is the case now. He will be a Dallas Cowboy, so we'll see how they split up those shares and um, if they can get any sort of production out of that because they're going to need somebody outside of just CD and Dak to provide for this offense. But we shall see how the Cowboys go, always operating in their own way. So we're just going to have to wait to see how that turns out for them this year. But we do have one more topic to get to on today's show. Just my final divisional standings and my predictions on how it will turn out. We're going to get to the NFC South in this last segment and talking about who could potentially be a new champion in this division from last year. So we'll get to all those details when we return in just a few seconds. 